Chapter 4, Rulers of Terabithia Because school had started the first Tuesday after Labor Day, it was a short week. It was a good thing because each day was worse than the one before. Leslie continued to join the boys at recess, and every day she won. By Friday, a number of 4th and 5th grade boys had already drifted away to play King of the Mountain on the slope between the two fields. Since there was only a handful left, they didn't even have to have heats, which took away a lot of the suspense. Running wasn't fun anymore, and it was all Leslie's fault. Jess knew now that he would never be the best runner of the 4th and 5th grades, and his only consolation was that neither would Gary Fulcher. They went through the motions of the contest on Friday, but when it was over and Leslie had won again, everyone sort of knew without saying that it was the end of the races. At least it was Friday and Miss Edmonds was back. The 5th grade had music right after recess. Jess had passed Miss Edmonds in the hall early in the day, and she had stopped him and made a fuss over him. Did you keep drawing this summer? May I see your pictures or are they private? Jess shoved his hair off his red forehead. I'll show you them. She smiled her beautiful, even-toothed smile and shook her shiny black hair back off her shoulder. Great, she said. See you. He nodded and smiled back. Even his toes felt warm and tingly. Now he sat on the rug in his teacher's room. The same warm feeling swept through him at, at the sound of her voice. Even her ordinary speaking voice bubbled up from inside her, rich and melodic. Miss Edmonds fiddled a minute with her guitar, taking the tighten, talking as she tightened the strings to the jingling of her bracelets and the strumming of chords. She was in her jeans as usual and sat there cross-legged in front of them as though, she, as though that was the way teachers always did. She asked a few of the kids how they were and how their summer had been. They kind of mumbled back. She didn't speak directly to Jess, but she gave him a look with those blue eyes of hers that made him zing like one of the strings she was strumming. She took note of Leslie and asked for an introduction, which one of the girls personally gave. Then she smiled at Leslie, and Leslie smiled back the first time Jess, the first time Jess could remember seeing Leslie smile since she won the race on Tuesday. What do you like to sing, Leslie? Oh, anything. Miss Edmonds picked a few odd chords and then began to sing more quietly than usual for that particular song. I see a land bright and clear, and the time is coming near when we'll live in this land, you and me, hand in hand. People began to join in quietly at first to match her mood, but as the song built up at the end, their voices did as well, so that by the time they got to the final, free to be you and me, the whole school could hear them. Caught in pure delight of it, Jess turned his eyes and met Leslie's. He smiled at her. What the heck? There, was, there wasn't any reason he couldn't. What was he scared of? Anyhow, Lord. Sometimes he acted like the original yellow-bellied sapsucker. And he nodded and smiled again. He, she smiled back. He felt there in the teacher's room that it was the beginning of a new season in his life, and he chose deliberately to make it so. He did not have to make any announcement to Leslie that he had changed his mind about her. She already knew it. She plunked herself down, on, down beside him on the bus and squeezed over closer to him to make room for Maybell on the same seat. She talked about Arlington, about the huge suburban school she used to go to with its gorgeous music room, but not a single teacher in, its, in it as beautiful or as nice as Miss Edmonds. You had a gym? Yeah, I think all the schools did, or most of them anyway, she sighed. I really miss it. I'm pretty good at gymnastics. Well, I guess you hate it here. Yeah. She was quiet for a moment, thinking. Jess decided about her form of school, which he saw as a bright and new with a gleaming gymnasium larger than the one at the consolidated high school. I guess you had a lot of friends there, too. Yeah. Why'd you come here? My parents are reassessing their value structure. Huh? They decided that they decided they were too hooked on money and success, so they bought that old farm and they're going to farm it and think about what's important. Jess was start staring at her with his mouth open. He knew it, and he couldn't help himself. It was the most ridiculous thing he had ever heard. But you're the one that's got to pay. Yeah. Why don't they think about you? Well, he talked it over, she explained patiently. I wanted to come too. She looked past him out the window. You never know ahead of time what something's really going to be like. The bus had stopped. Leslie took Mabel's hand and led her off. 
Jess followed, still trying to figure out why two grown people and a smart girl like Leslie wanted to leave a comfortable life in the suburbs for a place like this. They watched the bus roar off. You can't make a go of a farm nowadays, you know, he said finally. My dad has to go to Washington to work, or he wouldn't have enough money. Oh, money's not the problem. Sure it's the problem. I mean, she said simply, not for us. It took him a minute to catch on. He didn't know people for whom money was not a problem. Oh, he tried to remember not to talk about money with her after that. But Leslie had other problems at Lark Creek that caused more of a rumpus than lack of money. There was the matter of television. It started with, with Miss Myers reading out loud a composition that Leslie had written about her hobby. Everyone had to write a paper about his or her favorite hobby. Jess had written about football, which he really hated, but he had enough brains to know that if he said drawing, everyone would laugh at him. Most of the boys swore that watching the Washington Redskins on TV was their favorite hobby. The girls were divided. Those who didn't care much about what Miss Myers thought chose watching game shows on TV. And those like Wanda K. Moore, who were still aiming for A's, chose good, reading good books. But Miss Myers didn't read anyone's paper out loud except Leslie's. I want to read the composition aloud for two reasons. One, it is beautifully written. And two, it tells about an unusual hobby for a girl. Miss Myers beamed her first day smile at Leslie. Leslie stared back stared at her desk. Being Miss Myers' pet was pure poison at Lark Creek. Scuba Diving by Leslie Burke. Mrs. Myers' sharp voice cut Leslie's sentence into funny little phrases, but even so, the power of Leslie's words drew Jess with her, uh, with her under the dark water. Suddenly, he could hardly breathe. Suppose you went under and your mask filled up with water and you couldn't get to the top in time. He was choking and sweating. He tried to push down his panic. This was Leslie Burke's favorite hobby? Nobody would make up scooby diving to be their favorite hobby if it wasn't so. That meant Leslie did it a lot. That she wasn't scared of going deep, deep down into a world of no air and little light. Lord, he was such a coward. How could he be all in a tremble just listening to Miss Myers read about it? He was worse than a ba worse than worse a baby than Joyce Ann. His dad expected him to be a man, and there he was, letting some girl who wasn't even ten yet scare the liver out of him by just telling him what it was like to sight see underwater. Dumb, dumb, dumb. I'm sure, Miss Myers was saying, that all of you were as impressed as I with Leslie's exciting essay. Impressed, Lord, he nearly drowned. In the classroom was a shuffling of feet and papers. Now, would I give you a homework assignment, Muff? muffled groans that I'm sure you'll enjoy mumblings of unbelief tonight on channel 7 at 8 p.m. there's going to be a special about a famous underwater explorer Jacques Cousteau and I want everyone to watch then write a one page telling what telling what you learned a whole page yes does spelling count doesn't spelling always count Gary both sides of the paper one side will be enough, Wanda K, but I'll give extra credit to those who do extra work. Wanda K smiled primly. You could already see ten pages taking shape in her pointy head. Mrs. Myers? Yes, Leslie? Lord, Mrs. Myers was liable to crack her face if she kept, smiling, kept up smiling like that. What if you can't watch the program? You inform your parents that it is a homework assignment, and I'm sure they will not object. What if Leslie's voice faltered and then shook her head and cleared her throat so the words came out stronger? What if you don't have a television set? Lord, Leslie, don't say that. You can always watch on mine. But it was too late to save her. The hissing sounds of disbelief were already building into a rumbling of content. contempt. Mrs. Myers blinked her eyes. Well, well, she blinked some more. You could tell she was trying to figure out how to save Leslie, too. Well, in that case, one could, one could write a one-page composition on something else, couldn't one, Leslie? She tried to smile across the classroom upheaval to Leslie, but it was of no use. Class! 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 Her Leslie smile shifted suddenly and ominously to a scowl that silenced the room. The storm. She handed out dittoed sheets of arithmetic problems. Jess stole a look at Leslie. Her face, bent low over the math sheet, was red and fierce.